have fun in here. Praise God. We, we, maybe, we maybe won't have some more snacks or whatever else goes on with, with the kids' church. Um, but it is, it is appropriate that adults, people that are more mature, don't keep drinking milk or don't keep drinking pablum or whatever else you want to say, little crackers. You know, God has meat for us. He wants us to be strong. Praise God. And if you just had a diet of drinking milk all the time, you would get weaker and weaker. Because, uh, you know, as, as an infant, that's what you're designed to have. But after a period of time, it's time to start taking on some solid real food. And um, so today, I believe we have some solid food for us to eat. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we honor you as we open our word. We thank you, Lord, that your spirit is still, still speaking to us. And I declare that we have ears to hear today what the Spirit has to say. Lord, more importantly, I declare that we are hearers of the Word and doers. And because we're doers of the Word, we'll be blessed in our doing. And we will prove our faith by our doing. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll be starting off in Matthew's Gospel, so let's go there right now. Matthew chapter number 8. And as you're finding Matthew 8, and while I'm trying to find it as well here, um, I'm going to continue just a few more of those light bulb jokes. Remember that from last week? Now, I preface by saying this, and I'm going to say it again. I believe that as Christians, as people, we need to learn to sometimes laugh at ourselves. Yeah. All right? Sometimes we take ourselves way too seriously. And so um, just take this in a light -heart, light-hearted manner as it's meant, um, kind of poking fun at, at denominations and some of the things that go on with that. Uh, how many Church of Christ uh, members does it take to change a light bulb? Huh? You know that? How, how many Church of Christ members does it take to change a light bulb? It takes six men. One to authorize the change. Two to look up the scriptures to see if it's something Jesus or Paul would approve of. And three to keep the women in submission i.e. keeping them from giving advice, instructions, or usurping authority over the men. <laughs> Praise God. Well, if you noticed around here, um, we believe God uses women in ministry. Amen. Amen. Yes, He does. Glory to God. How many Pentecostals does it take to change a light bulb? Come on, you should know this. Huh? Huh? <laughs> it takes ten. One to change the bulb, and nine to pray against the spirit of darkness. <laughs> All right, and our last one. How many TV evangelists does it take to change a light bulb? One. But for the message of light to continue, please send your donations in today. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Well, we're continuing our study on the ministry of Jesus and looking at the miracles that Jesus performed. And you know, I believe one of the big mistakes that many Christians make is they look at the ministry of Jesus and it's like something so far off and so impossible. I mean, they look up to it, they respect all the things that Jesus did, but they see it as an impossible dream for them. 
But my Bible says that we are to be imitators. Say imitators. Imitators of God as dear children. Is that in the Bible? Have you seen that? And so... To have that vision that what Jesus did in ministry so far off and impossible, if that's our vision, then we are not seeing what I just quoted about being imitators of God. We're not seeing that as something we are to do. Because we see, oh, that's just impossible. I can't do that. Jesus set a pattern for his body to follow. Hello? Yeah, he did. He set a pattern, a goal, an image for us to fashion our faith on so that we can do... Didn't one of the last things he told his disciples? He said, I give you power. I give you authority. Now you go in my name. And what? Do what I did. Cast out devils. Yeah. Yeah. Speak with new tongues. And the devil comes, hey, just deal with him. Just deal with him. Get out of here. And lay hands on the what? The sick. And they shall recover. Praise God. So I hope and believe that by our teaching on Sunday mornings, that we'll start seeing that thing that seems so far off. And that's, you know, that's Jesus' territory. Ah. I can't do anything like that. We'll start seeing that Jesus even rebuked his disciples for not following in his footsteps and doing what he told them to do. One of the things that we have to do is we have to take take the word of God as final authority in our life. I come across people often that they have dug in their heels and say, well, Maybe the Bible says that, but I don't believe that or I won't do that. Huh? And so you'll find yourself fighting against the will of God. God's will is, is, you know, his word is his will. If you're fighting against that, then you won't have faith to, uh, to be a doer of the word or faith to do what Jesus said to do. You know, the Bible says, and I, I had a discussion this week with with a believer, and and the subject came up about Israel. And this person said, nah, "I I don't support Israel." I said, "What?" I said, "Really?" I said, "That's very interesting." I said, "Well, I believe the scripture. I believe the scripture says if I." Bless Israel, I'll be blessed. But if I curse Israel, and either you're for or against, and if you're against, you're cursing. If you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. You know, we'll be, we'll be doing a lot better if we agree with God. Amen. Amen. And we agree with God by agreeing with His Word. Praise the Lord. Okay, so did you find Matthew chapter number 8? All right. We'll be starting at verse number 23. It says here, And when Jesus entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Well, that's pretty smart. Praise God. Somebody's horn's going off. Anybody got your clicker? Try clicking. See if it'll go off. Praise the Lord. Okay, so they followed Jesus into the ship and verse 24 and behold there arose a great tempest in the sea insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves but Jesus was asleep now I gotta say this he must have been tuckered out here's a storm the wind is blowing the waves are crashing over into the boat it's filling with water And Jesus is asleep. Wow. Praise God. And his disciples came to him, and they woke him up. Can you picture the disciples? 
who's going to wake him up? You know, uh, who, who gets the short straw to shake Jesus? Because <laughs> I don't want to be the one to wake him up. And so they woke him up. And what did they say? What did they say to Jesus? Lord, help, we're about to die. That's in essence what they're saying. Lord, save us, we perish. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? Or why are you full of fear? Why? O ye of little faith. Then he got up. So apparently he was laying down, as we see and I believe in Mark's account, we're going to read that in a little bit. He, he was asleep. His head was on a pillow. That means Jesus took a pillow on his trips. Somebody had a pillow. Praise God. And uh, so Jesus arose. He rebuked the winds and the sea. And what happened? The wind stopped. The waves died down. And... The disciples looked around and they marveled and said, What kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? Well, that's the title of our message today. The wind and sea obey him. We welcome our internet audience. This is Sunday January what? 8th, 2017. And I believe in this story, there's some things that we can learn and apply to our lives. How many of you have ever had a storm just come out of nowhere in your life? Yeah. You weren't expecting it, but all of a sudden, boom, you were in the midst of a tough situation. And how we respond in those situations shows us where our faith is. Let me ask you, where was the faith of the disciples in the boat with Jesus? Where was their faith? Well, it sure wasn't in what Jesus said. We'll see it in the other version or in the account of it. But he said, we're going to go to the other side. What they had a vision of. Seeking to the bottom <laughs> of the lake is what they had a vision of. They said, we're perishing. We're going to die. Where was their faith? It wasn't where it should be. Why? Fear had been allowed to take over. Why are you so full of fear? So they could have been full of faith. Now, let me ask you a question. If they were full of faith, what would they have done? The same thing that Jesus did, they would have spoke to the storm. That's right. If you were full of faith, when the storm comes in your life, you'll respond like Jesus did. Instead of, oh my, what are we going to do? And start panicking. Or a panic attack comes. <gasps> <laughs> oh, Martha the big one was that Martha what was that show remember that Zafford and Sons was it Martha Elizabeth. Elizabeth thank you I got the wrong name Elizabeth <gasps> it's the big one <laughs> how do we respond when trouble comes we have a choice of what we're full of. We have a choice. How we're going to respond when these situations come. Now, let's go to Mark's account of this. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Luke also records this event. But we're going to look at, at Mark right now. And verse number 
35. And the same day, when even or when evening was come, he said to his disciples, Let us pass over unto the other side. Now, how many of you noticed when I just read that verse number 35, it started with the word and? Do you ever get up and say, and, and go on with the sentence? Normally you don't do that, unless it's connected to what you were talking about before. So I think it's important for us to look at what was Jesus doing early in the day, because now it was evening, and he said to them, let's go to the other side. What was Jesus doing? Well, all we have to do is look up earlier in the verse, or in, the, in that chapter. Have you ever heard of Jesus teaching the parable, the sower soweth the word? Yeah. In fact, Jesus referred to this as, as the parable, if you don't understand this one, you won't understand anything that I'm teaching. I referred, heard it referred to as the granddaddy parable. The sower went to sow. Some of the seed went by the wayside. Some fell on stony ground. Uh, some fell among thorns. And some fell on good ground, right? And his disciples came afterwards, after he had done that teaching, and said, Lord, I help us here we need some help understanding what you're talking about and he explained it to them what was the explanation first of all the the seed is the word say the word the, word. the seed is the word of god and sometimes the seed falls on the wayside a pathway a hard ground that it's so hard that seed can't even penetrate it's going to sit up on that dirt and what's going to happen the birds are going to come. Satan's going to come immediately to take that word. But also, Satan is after word that falls on stony ground and thorny ground. And he explains about that illustration of stones and, and thorns are things in our lives that try to choke the word, that try to prevent the word of God from producing. Jesus explained it. He said, um, those on stony, stony ground are those that hear the word and immediately, hallelujah, praise the Lord, that's for me. But they have no root in themselves. They have not committed to even go through the pressure that comes. But they endure for a short time. But when affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they become offended and they say, well, the word doesn't work. I don't believe it. It doesn't work for me. You know those faith people are a bunch of nuts anyway. And those that are sown on thorny ground, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things enter in and choke the word, and the word becomes unfruitful. Well, actually, guess the, way. the word is always fruitful if you keep it in the ground. It's not the word that's unfruitful, is that we don't trust and believe God and we cause it not to be fruitful. I mean, our faith gets replaced by fear, doubt, and unbelief. Hallelujah. And of course, we know then those that are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, I share that with you about the and and what was going on earlier in the day. Because that night, the disciples had an opportunity to act on what Jesus taught. I don't know if you've seen it like this before. But Satan came to steal the word. Jesus was asleep on the pillow expecting to get the other side because that's where he said he was going. But Satan came to try to stop them from going where they were headed. 
Now we also know, and we may teach on this next week, we also know that on the other side where they were heading, there was a crazy man. I mean, he was absolute crazy. You know, you've maybe seen some crazy people. This guy took the cake. I mean, he ran around naked. He cut himself with stones and everything else. He, he, he just was mad. He lived in the graveyards and ran around the mountains and scared people. Go, boo! I mean, he was scaring people. They'd try to arrest him and put him in chains, try to control him. And the devil, the anointing, uh, uh, the demonic influence in, her, in his life would come on him. And that strength, he would even break chains off of his body. Yeah. Jesus had an appointment, I believe, to minister to him. The devil didn't want that to happen. But see, the disciples, all they could see was, all they could focus on, what was happening around them. The wind was, I mean, it was a big, big wind. Uh, wind and, and the water was covering the ship. And it was not only ankle deep, it was getting real deep to where they were going to sink. Yeah, so let, let's read Mark's account of this. All right. So the same day, evening came, let us go to the other side. And when they sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was there in the ship. And there were also some other little ships that went on this trip across the Sea of Galilee. Now, we're not talking a huge, long trip. Um, how many miles is it across? Five miles, maybe, across from where they left, which was probably um, near uh, where Jesus' ministry was headquartered there in, in Capernaum. And they were going over across to the more the, the north side of, this, of the, we call it the Sea of Galilee, but it's a lake. And so the, these ships were going across. There arose a great storm of wind. The waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And some of Jesus' disciples were fishermen. On that lake, they knew uh, what happens when these windstorms come down. And many of their fellow people had, had died on that lake because of those storms. And their boat was getting full. And so panic began to set in. Verse 38. And Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Now, how many of you know the disciples could be just as <laughs> we are? They could have thought to themselves, doesn't he care? Why is he sleeping back here? At least he could get up and start bailing the water out instead of back there sleeping. Do you know that's exactly what carnal Christians do to spiritual Christians? Well, won't you stay up all night and pray with me? Won't you worry with me? They want a carnal response to a situation. You know, we need a spiritual response. We need a God response. We need to do what Jesus did. Amen. And if they would have listened and held on to that word that he taught earlier that day, they would have got up in that ship and said, Wind, cease now. But what happened? Persecution, affliction came. And instead of being strong in faith, they were strong in fear. And so they got, Jesus, don't you care? We're about to die. Jesus should have said, I'm not going to tell it. I, I shouldn't say it that way. I, 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 I repent of that. If I was Jesus, I might have said, got up and said, why did you wake me? 
and gone back to sleep. Jesus may have had, had to uh, get up and walk on water while all of them were swimming in the water in that case. But he did the right thing. He spoke to the storm, and then he rebuked them. Hello. He rebuked them. Pastor Sandy was talking earlier about a coach. I've seen football coach grab the mask of the helmet of a football player right to his face. Just get in their face. Because they weren't doing what they were trained to do. We trained you. We coached you. We work with you day in and day out, day in and day out, and you don't do what we trained you to do. Get with it. That's why Jesus rebuked him. He said, where is your faith? I just spent all day teaching you and all these multitudes. I even sat down and explained it. You asked and I explained it in detail. And you still gave place to the devil. Look at you waking me up. Don't wake Jesus from his nap. <laughs> He's like, you don't wake Pastor Sandy from her nap. You, you just don't. No, don't. No. Uh-uh. Don't call her on her cell phone on Saturday afternoons. Sometimes she forgets to shut it off. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. See, what happened, the cares of this world crept in. They were afraid of dying. They were full of fear. Why were they full of fear? Because they let their faith drain out. They let go of, of the promise of God. My friends, don't let go of the promise of God. You and I will experience storms. Sometimes it'll feel like you're going under, like those disciples did. But you know, if they would have, go have a blessed service, guys. Um, if they would have responded, if they would have been a doer of the word, the anointing would have showed up because of their words, just like the anointing showed up when Jesus spoke to the wind. Amen. Pastor, are you saying that we can we can cause natural circumstances to change? You mean we can affect the weather? We can affect things around us? Well? Well? I believe we can. If Jesus did, and he's called us to do the things that he did. Now you don't go out and, and impress people. Watch me. I'm going to create a rainbow. Rainbow B. <laughs> no. That's foolishness. But if you're going somewhere. And some critical thing happens. Like a tornado coming right down the road at you. You better start speaking to that tornado. And if in your car, you also better turn around and drive the other direction as fast as you can. All right? Yeah. Now, if, if a tornado is coming at your house and you don't have time to get anywhere or go anywhere, then you speak to that tornado and that thing's going to have to go somewhere else. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. And nothing's impossible to what? You, if you believe. Notice that Satan came for the very word Jesus taught his disciples. And the disciples failed the test. But I think they learned from it. Much of the learning happened after Jesus was resurrection. Because at that moment, there was, this guy's Superman. <laughs> I mean, look at this. What kind of man is this that can do this? But see, you and I are called to be a Superman, a Superwoman. 
in the spirit. And when the devil comes, we're not to let him be successful. Where there's hail, sleet, snow, and you're not a postman, but I'm, I just whatever may come in our lives. Financial catastrophe. It does not have to cause our lives to be disrupted. Amen. If God is for us, if God is for us, what? Who can be against us? Amen. So he arose and rebuked the wind. Now I know in some Christian circles, if you do, did that in their presence, they would think that you are a nut. But why are we concerned with what people think? If we are obeying, if we are patterning, if we are imitating Jesus in his ministry, we're on solid ground. Amen? Amen. He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. His word worked. He believed. Jesus believed the wind would obey him. Part of the problem is sometimes try, sometimes Christians try this faith stuff. Try this confession stuff. This isn't something you try. It's kind of like I tried Vegas. Throw those dice. Pull that lever. I'm going to try this and see if it works. This is not gambling. This is faith. You believe what God promised he can do. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I understand that Jesus had developed his level of faith for 30 some years at that point. He had learned to use his faith. One of the things we have to watch out for is that we don't overload the faith level that we have. Hello. You have to learn to use your faith. You maybe take baby steps. I encourage people to do this. Start speaking that when you need to buy something, it's on sale. And God will direct you where you need to buy it. Believe God for a good parking spot. Believe, believe God for certain favor. And, and or, or believe God for uh, you want to buy something for someone. And so believe God for a supernatural way for money to come to pay for that. An extra $50, $100. Once you have a $100 faith, you can work on 200 You work on 1000 Then 10000 Then 100000 Sometimes people try to overload their faith because they're, they're not developed to that point. It's kind of like a weightlifter. I'm going to lift 500 pounds. Well, what were you lifting yesterday? If you were lifting 50 yesterday, I can tell you right now, 500, you're not even going to budget. You're going to look funny. Oh! You can grunt, you can groan, you can do all kinds of things, but that weight is not going to move. But if you keep doing 50, then you go 100, and you'll do 200, and, and pretty soon you'll be able to get to that 500 level. Praise God. But if you try, you try that, you try that 500, all oh, this faith stuff doesn't work. I'm not going to do that anymore. My, I don't believe that I can say things and, and God will cause it to come to pass. I just don't believe that. Well, the problem is you don't you didn't work how God meant it to be worked. Praise God. Jesus believed the wind would obey him. When you speak to that storm, believe that it's going to obey you. Amen. 
One more illustration. Here's another area that people get tripped up on as far as physical healing. They have in their mind, oh, you know, if cancer ever came on my body, I believe that I'd be able to stand strong against it and I'd have a supernatural healing in my body. It wouldn't be able to take my life. But you know, they get a headache. The first thing they turn to is Excedrin PM. Hello. That's the first thing they think of and reach for. Wait a minute. Shouldn't you be using your faith for the headache? Applying and using it there, kind of like the 10 pounds, get to 20 pounds and so forth. Shouldn't you work on that? Because I can tell you this. If we don't have faith for a cold or a headache to receive healing from, we're kidding ourselves if cancer showed up. Hello. We'd be calling out, Jesus! Jesus, are you asleep on the pillow? Look at what I'm going through. Jesus is not moved by the need. God the Father is not moved by the need. If he was moved by need, there'd be no needs on this earth. I just said something very profound. Please listen. God loves. God wants to meet every need. But he's designed the system how you and I receive from heaven. It's called by faith. By faith. And so God is moved by faith. Jesus was moved by faith. The Holy Spirit was moved by faith. Jesus even said to many, most, most everyone that he ministered to, be it unto you according to your faith. Our faith is the determining factor. Hence, we better pay attention. To what our faith is doing. Are we going to have. Disciple faith in the boat. Jesus we're dying. Or are we going to have faith. Storm get out of here. We're going to the other side. What kind of faith are we going to have. Amen let's all stand together. Praise God. As always, the Word of God challenges us. You know, God doesn't need to change. He won't anyway. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't need to, but God does not change. If anyone needs to change, it's us. If anyone's failed in any spiritual issue that we've been dealing with, praying about, and so forth, God is not the cause of the problem or the, the reason why it wasn't answered. It's us. We have to look inwardly. Hallelujah. So I hope today this challenge of doing something with our faith will take root deep in our lives. And we will begin with a new, a new uh, focus and being invigorated to develop our faith to a greater level in 2017 than ever before. You know, you can have mountain-moving faith. You can have devil-butt-kicking faith. I, I said it in church. It's okay. I mean, that's what we're to do. We're to submit ourselves to God and resist the devil and get him to flee. Yeah. Be prepared for those storms that come. Knowing that God is with us, he'll never forsake us, and he will see us through. Praise God. Jesus said, if we believe and speak to that mountain, it will obey us. We have to believe it, and we have to say it.
Hallelujah. Father, today, we know the day in which we are living is a, is a great time of stress, distress, and trouble. But Lord, we're not to be depressed about those things. But we're to know that no matter what comes, the Word of God will work in our lives. Jesus, you said, be of good cheer. You've overcome the world and all the things that are in this world, so because you're in us, we can overcome all these things that may come. No matter what type of storm it is, we will pass through it and get to the other side. I declare in the name of Jesus an accountability and a responsibility to develop our faith. In the name of Jesus, take a hold of that responsibility. Be hearers of the word. Feed your faith. Feed your spirit with the word of God. Pray in the Holy Spirit, building up yourself. And then act, react, and declare just like Jesus did. And you will see the very same results. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Full of faith and not full of fear. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Well, as we go, today let's go rejoicing. And also go with this mind in us. And that mind is that we are to let our light shine everywhere we go. One thing about light, it draws people. Not to us personally. Oh, you're so wonderful. No. Drawn to Jesus, who is the light in us. Amen. The Bible says we are to be ready to give an answer. Why we are full of joy. Why we are full of of hope and faith is because of our Lord. Amen. Father, I speak a blessing upon your people today. I thank you, Lord, that your angels watch over, protect us. They have charge over us. And Lord, we, we purpose to be doers of the word and not hearers only to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. We're dismissed. Come on outside for our fellowship time.